Hey guys, this is Infinite Flash here. I'm playing someone called Chix Mate, and he's gonna he's playing C4, and I think I'm gonna begin with this you know this Dutch move, F5. Let's see if we can get kind of get this you know theoretical line against this move. Let's see. Let's see if he knows the main lines. I'm gonna continue with my G6 Leningrad. Let's see if he plays Knight F3. Yep, he does. I play Bishop G7. Let's see if he goes for the G3 setups. No, he goes for E3. And I don't really mind that. I'm going to play d6 and probably next move I'm in a castle and get this kind of Leningrad set up. So he's, a, he's going for something really, really traditional. Um, you know, you always have to wonder if he might castle, you know, long here. Bishop d2, queen c2, um, you know, that kind of stuff. So now I guess what I'm going to do is play a nice developing move such as knight c6, delaying castling just for a move. You know, maybe I'll end up castling queenside in this kind of position, as weird as that might look. Okay, and now d5 is met by this knight e5 move. And he has to take here, which is not the best looking move, but... Or that, okay, you can play that, but... I mean, in this position... You know, actually, I can probably castle here in this specific position. And, you know, if he moves the knight away, I think I can play c5 and, you know, f4. I can always play knight f7 in this kind of position. So, I guess we can consider knight takes f3, bishop takes f3. Although, you know, it's not totally clear what to do. So, you know, I think I'm just going to castle first. Bishop c2 looks like a safe move to play. Okay, so he's going for something really, really calm and, you know, stuff like that. Very calm. Now the key thing is maybe I sh can maybe I can play a move such as, you know, a6. Looks very, very calm. But I have an idea here. Maybe I want to prevent knight b5 and I want to play queen e8. Trying to, you know, prepare this exact move I'm about to play. You know, takes here. Bishop takes, and now I play this queen e8 move, you know, preparing this e5, uh, you know, break move. Looks very, very nice. And I, I, I kind of uh, expect, you know, e4 in this position. Yeah, he's, been, he's preparing it right now, and that's fine, but I'm going to continue with my own plan here. Although I do have to watch out for tricks with, you know, knight d5 in this kind of position. Um... You know, probably what I want to do is play this move first. You know, and the idea is I'll just, after e4, I'll just take it, and knight takes, I'll just play e5, and, you know, I don't, I'm not doing so badly there. I, I think I'm doing quite okay. Um, you know, I don't really think uh, black is doing too badly in this kind of position. You know, I guess he's kind of suspecting b5, and I, I don't really care that he thinks that. I'm just going to push e5 because my goal of rook b8 was to protect my b7 pawn and you know if pawn takes pawn here I'm going to take with my bishop. So and he, he really has to take, he's kind of obliged to um, because uh, if the pawn remains on e5 then I have this really really nice center. So now he plays knight d2 uh, kind of rerouting this piece. You know he has this weakness on the b4 square that I want to take advantage of. You know his king side's almost lonely in this sense. I'm wondering what I should do. What move do I want to do to improve my position? I always have this option of, you know, king, uh, king h8, just kind of getting out of this pen. You know, that's probably not the, probably not a bad move. And you know, one of my ideas in this kind of position is bishop g8, securing my bishop. And you know, he might get the d5 square temporarily, but you know, after a move. He still goes for it. Interesting. Um, I can actually play, you know, c6 in this kind of position. That's not that bad. You know, c6 and knight c7, the knight is actually trapped. And almost trapped, I guess. It probably is trapped. But, you know, the point was um, it's not looking too great. And, you know, I can play maybe uh, queen d8, I think. Hmm. He might have bishop a5, though. That's really weird. Really weird. 
Um, I don't really want to take this knight because of c takes d5, and you know he gets strong pressure on the c file. I, I don't really like the look of that. So bishop a5 looks really artificial, but you know it might actually not be that bad. Okay, so he's just going for something like an all exchange kind of route of uh, playing. I don't really mind this. I, I think Black's doing quite okay. I mean, he's just going to take here. I'm going to take my bishop, and he might exchange everything off. And I'll have a really, really quite a you know nice bishop on g8 here, always attacking the c4 pawn, and and okay. I mean, should be okay for uh, Black really. So I guess the next plan is perhaps uh, queen e7, protecting my d6 pawn, preparing maybe rook d8. And okay, I'm being a little bit of a... Um, no, never mind, never mind. I guess he, maybe he can count on maybe a, a queen trade here, maybe. Okay, so now what I've got to do is definitely support my center and definitely try to push the pawn on d5 through. Um, you know, this kind of frees my game up and I think, uh, you know, okay, after b5, I think I can just take pawn takes pawn here with the a pawn. Maybe c takes, but okay, a takes b is not that bad either. Um, You know, in this, I wonder what I should do. Maybe queen g7 is not such a bad move. Queen, oh, though my c6 pawn is hanging. Okay. So now the next move I can consider is definitely this d5 move, kind of freeing up my game. I think, uh, I think bishop takes bishop here isn't that bad. Okay, and the position isn't that dynamic. It's a... Uh, pretty about equal position. Maybe white has a small advantage, maybe. Um, because, you know, he's going to get this isolated pawn, but I don't think it's of much consequence. And I think this should be okay for uh, black. Maybe he takes first. I'm not sure if he wants to take here first and then isolate it. But okay. Doesn't look so bad. And I gotta be careful about a move like rook c8. Um, you know, this might run into uh, bishop takes f6 check when my rook is on pre. So, <clears throat> okay, he's playing rook a7 trying to get some pressure. Now, I'm gonna play a bit of a, let's say, a prophylactic move with king h8, planning to threaten rook c8. And, you know, this is quite a serious threat. So he, he wants to avoid that logically, and here I think uh, I think here I can just play bishop takes c3, and now he can't take this with check, and now he has to take here, and that's fine. I think that's fine for black, and I can't stay defending this pawn forever. I've got to play really really actively in this kind of position. I probably should play you know f4. That looks really nice. F4. You know, trying to get really, really active with my pieces, and you know that that actually looks pretty good. F4. You know, there's also this idea of D4. That's not that bad either, but you know, F4 looks pretty sound as well. Trying to get you know my rook into play already here. I'm not so sure if my rook wants to go to any of these other squares just yet, but F4. You know, take here, and he can add this pawn eventually. But I'm going to have some really, really nice active pieces with my two major pieces here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take here first on d e3. That looks quite okay. And if he queen takes, I mean, the end game's not that bad. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's not that bad. Um, okay, I don't really care about this, do I? Rook f7. I don't think I really care. Um, you know, in fact, white's actually, uh, you know, this is, uh, maybe I shouldn't have gone rook f7. Yeah, this check, this is what I'm wondering about, and now I gotta play this, and now he gets queen d4 check. Oh my god, why did I do this? 
Okay. Well, this is not so terrible. Okay, that, this is fine. I have rook f5, and I'm, I'm getting the pawn back, and that's not that bad. I mean, this kind of endgame is pretty drawish, but we can still play it. Yeah, rook f5, and, you know, rook a5 is met by b6, and he can't really attack my pawn before I get to take his pawn. And he doesn't really have a good waiting move. Maybe e4, but maybe I can go rook here. And, or actually, I want the pass pawn. He, he goes there, but I mean, I don't really care. King f2 now for white. Trying to get his king active is pretty reasonable. And from here, I mean, what should I do? Probably uh, king g5. Planning maybe h5 here. Okay. And I'm just going to, you know, take some space here. You know, I have the pass pawn, uh, an outside pass pawn, which is kind of nice. And <laughs> this is so annoying to play, though. I mean, maybe maybe I uh, play behind over here and try to push my pawn from here. I don't really care. It's probably just really drawish, but, you know, I still want to play this up because I have the outside pass pawn. And, you know, pass pawns generally in the endgame should be pushed very very quickly in this kind of position. At one point it's just king d3. Um, king g7, I don't want to run to king, king f7, king e5 when, you know, he threatens a check and it's kind of annoying. Um, probably should trade off my weak pawn here for his g3 pawn. That's generally a good idea to trade off your weak pawns. And now he has, you know, trouble defending this pawn, I think. This is, uh, maybe it's like rook b4 or something. That's probably not that bad. Rook b4 defending the h4 pawn once I check here. Or king c3 maybe. No, king c3 is meant like rook takes here. Or maybe, hmm, hard to say. Yeah, rook b4 doesn't look that bad. And rook b4, um, rook g4, king c3. Okay, he, still goes, he goes for something really similar to this. And here I want to try to confuse matters with this rook tied to his king here. And I want to get my rook, you know, really active here. He's going to play like rook f4 check. And I have to go back. Yeah. Move my rook to a more active position. attack this pawn and now he has to defend it with rook f or e4 and you know I can definitely um, try to get some activity here although maybe I think I just blundered there yikes oh my god so bad I'm so bad at endgame um, Yeah, I messed up totally there. King d7, now I have to take here. Uh, I'm not sure if this is even a draw anymore. Probably it's not a draw. Gotta get my king active, and probably it's not even a... It's probably a win for white. Man, I messed that up. Oh, uh, oh my god. Although, you know, it's not terribly easy, I hope, for him to try and... Um, try and, you know, win this. Maybe I'm in a draw. Maybe. And I just gotta, you know, stay within these three files, and I think he's just gonna... I think I'm not for a draw now. He can't really make it in time, I think. Yeah, he agrees to a draw. Pretty well played. Um, I'm gonna just type GG. You know, I really escaped there. I mean, if we kinda go back um, to over here, I mean, this is just really bad endgame pl play by me. You know, I wanted to push for a win and try to keep more... You know, I wanted to really try for a win. Um, if we kind of scroll back here. You know, here, uh, giving up my B pawn might not be the best option, but I wanted to go for a weak pawn there. and Maybe rook g4, rook e4. And, you know, playing... It's probably a draw, nevertheless. But, um... You know, let's see, takes... No, I, I mean, he has the outside pass pawn, so... Maybe I should just leave that pawn here and 
I'm not sure. Yeah, I guess there's not much, I guess. I mean, look, we can go back and check out the middle game. Hmm. One, I, see, the, the Dutch is definitely not an opening you want to be playing in Blitz often. I mean, it's a good... It, I think I succeed more with it in a uh, long time control game. So this bishop d3 setup is really suspect in my opinion. This other setup that you white black can play is definitely, you know, castling here early. And, you know, if white continues with his castling, I think c6, and I've talked about this in a video, you know, black wants to play queen e8, and um, I don't know what, you know, white does. Maybe, you know, b3, kind of developing this bishop to this, this spot. A uh, move like e4, I don't think is that great. Probably because of bishop f5. And, I mean... I mean, it's not that great looking in my opinion. Okay, I mean, I have the weak e7 pawn, so, you know, maybe not even takes. Maybe, maybe, no, that may be well. Hmm. Let's see. Okay, knight c6 can't be that bad, and he played this, and... Okay, but the position I got was fine, but somewhere I messed up. Uh, let's see if we can check it out on in an analysis board. Ah, oh, what a shame. You can't increase the board size. Um, you know, if we kind of go back, let's see. Here, 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 here. A6 looked reasonable. Maybe it's not the best move, but, you know, at least I have a plan associated with it. Often, um, you know, you want a plan associated with your kind of play, otherwise than you know, drifting aimlessly. Okay, I guess one other option I have in this kind of position is knight f7 retreating the knight, and I'm playing for, you know, bishop d7 here, c5, you know, a6 and b5, maybe playing with the Benko. Maybe that was better. Um, I think I would expect white to play like rook b1, preparing b3 and bishop b2. Looks quite reasonable. And, you know, I would continue with bishop here. And, you know, b3, trying to get his bishop to his active diagonal. You know, in here, um, you know, either c5 or e5 is quite acceptable for black. I mean, the game position, I, uh, I got into slight trouble somewhere here. Um, somehow I allowed more than he should have, because I think black is really okay in this kind of position. I mean, this position doesn't look that great, for, in my opinion, uh, for white. It doesn't look kind of right. I mean, he has this weird queenside structure here, and I mean, this knight is on e2. These pieces would rather be switched around. These two, this bishop and knight, and you know, this bishop's going to come to c3. I guess uh, king h8 looks fine. You know, I, I could check it with the engine, but it's not really that much fun. Bishop g8 looks fine. I don't know, I mean, move like c6, and, you know, this knight looks ugly for me. Maybe it isn't that bad, but I don't know. Hmm, maybe it's not that bad. Maybe knight e4. Not really clear. Yeah, and here I guess I don't really have anything. Like, no constructive plan, I mean. Maybe d5 isn't premature. Maybe that's the mistake. I don't know. Uh, 
probably rook a8 uh, attempting a trade off this rook. I mean, one problem I had in the position was. Um, oh my god, sorry about that, guys. You know, in this kind of position, I'm just with this weak pawn, and okay, I mean, I get to play actively, and I don't, I mean, maybe queen b3 is not the best move, but, you know, maybe a move like this, but, although he has queen c8 at this line. Ah, so this was his best move. Queen c8, rook f8, queen here, threatening check ring. Ah, I see. Yeah, this is this might be a win for White. Maybe that was better for him. So maybe King G is not best. Maybe Rook D eight, and you know I kind of have all the same threats in this kind of position and. I'm not really afraid of queen b2 because of king g7, probably. And, I mean, this position doesn't look that threatening, in my opinion. Although, rook b7 is there. I mean, I don't want to play something passive like rook, b7, rook b8, but that might be necessary. Um, you know, anyways, guys, I, I may have not played the opening the best way, but, you know, I hope you learned something. This is Infinite Flash signing out.